Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. Get myself situated here. Let's see. Give everyone a chance to log in. And today we're going to be talking about the orgasm gap. We're going to talk about what is the orgasm gap. Because I'm talking to way too many women who are not having orgasms in compared to men. And I think sometimes um, when we educate as sex workers, when we educate um, women and men both, sometimes they have a better understanding of the way um, each other bodies work and they won't be so quick to get offended when the person that they're with requires a little more stimulation so that there won't be an orgasm gap, okay? So, again, I'm just giving everyone a chance to get on. And if you have questions, I'm on here so I can see everyone. All right. So, we're going to get started. Um, I personally decided to put this box here because... In my line of work, between the women that's coming into the store, between the women that I meet in the grocery store, the women that send me messages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, keep in mind I have three personal Facebook pages and I have a business Facebook page. So on four pages, I can literally fit the orgasm stories in this box. Seriously. When I say orgasm stories, I'm speaking of women that are not having orgasms, meaning that they are faking it. They are laying there pretending to have orgasms with the person that they with, all so that that person won't feel uh, inadequate. Then I actually have men that come into the store and they get offended when the woman that they with requires additional stimulation that they are not physically able to give them. So my job is to educate you and let you know that you should not be offended. What you should do is try to educate yourself and say, okay, you know what? We're having sex this way and I see that you're not having an orgasm. What is it that I can do to help you achieve this orgasm? That's the mentality that men should have. A lot of men don't have that mentality, especially men down south, but my job as a sex worker is to educate you and let you know it's all about how you choose to look at something, okay? You can choose to look at a glass half empty or half full, okay? You can choose to be offended or you can choose to say, you know what, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna see what I can do to help, okay? So, the orgasm gap is something very serious because Studies show that um, over 27% of women, this is only the ones that reported. I know the numbers are way higher than this, but this is reported. 27% of women are not having orgasms and they are faking it. Whereas 95% of men are having orgasms and only 5% of men are faking it. What you saying, Sharonda? Yes, men fake orgasms too. Men fake that they're coming too. It didn't happen for them. They just wanted it to be over for whatever reason. So they act as if they came because for whatever reason, they were exhausted from having sex, didn't want to have sex, um, tired, just, you know, not into it. It was boring to them, whatever. And they faked it. But the story from women faking it is so much higher than the stories from men faking it. And that's where the orgasm gap comes in. It's the gap because way more women fake it than men fake it, okay? And I need y'all to send in y'all questions because I'm actually reading right here along with you all. So if you have questions, please feel free to send in your questions. The reasons we have sexual enhancers is because in this industry, we know that everybody cannot have an orgasm through penetration alone. Women, you know, ain't just started using these bullets. Years ago, women was rubbing cucumbers and squash and all kind of shit on their genitalia trying to help get themselves off. This is not new. 
Women been making homemade dildos. They get on the, uh, on the edge of a couch and ride that motherfucker just to be able to get off. They may not have had an actual stimulating toy, but they needed something else to stimulate them other than the person that they was with. So, if you're with a person and you notice that they're not having orgasms, it's not that they're not enjoying sex. It's not that they're not enjoying it all the time. It's just that they're not being stimulated properly, which is where my favorite orgasmics comes in. Put this orgasmics on your finger. Put it on your finger. And I, this is going to be the vaginal hole. This is the clitoris up here. Take the orgasmics and rub it into the clitoris. The reason I don't bring my props out like talking about it is because I, I want to get the information out there and I don't want the video to get flagged. And a lot of times people will report the videos and they'll get flagged and nobody gets the information, which means nobody's learning. And I definitely don't want that. But what this does is it makes all the blood rush to the clitoris. It makes the clitoris get erect. And when the clitoris is erect, anything that touches up against it, you're coming back to back to back. Whether it be your finger, whether it be a bullet, whether it be his dick, whether it be the pressure from his body, whatever it is that's touching up against the clitoris, it is allowing you to be able to have an orgasm. That's why the product is one of the very best sellers in the store. Well, that is so great for you, Miss Aaliyah, um, that you've never faked it. But let me just tell you that I run into women every day who are faking it. And what really made me, because it's not just, I, I realized that it's not just black women, white women, this woman. When I had my Hispanic customers that came in last week for Valentine's Day, they even expressed to me how traditionally they are taught to just not even... Uh, say that you're not being satisfied in the bedroom because you don't ever want to make your man feel small. You don't ever want to make him feel like he's not pleasing you. You don't ever want to uh, mess with his ego. So basically, you just lay there and pretend to be happy even if you're not. Okay? Then we have the kangaroo. And I know y'all probably tired of being the kangaroo, but I would not keep pushing this product if this product did not work. Now, I, I talked to, um, I, I told one of my customers because he sent me a message on Instagram and he was basically saying that he really feels like, you know, once he watched my video about being asexual, that his wife may be asexual and it actually um, was one of the driving factors of him stepping out in their marriage. He was getting literally everything he needed but sex. Sex is vital in any marriage, okay? Unless you have agreed to have a sexless marriage. If you agree to have a sexless marriage, that means that you all have uh, understanding when it comes down to sex and you are there, whether it be for co-parenting, whether it be for finances, y'all are there for everything but sex. And sometimes when people have a sexless marriage, they allow other things to happen because they know that they can't fulfill those obligations for their spouse. Um, yes, Jennifer, I am in Baton Rouge, right on Florida Boulevard. Um, but back to what I was saying, He's not saying that um, that it was her fault that he cheated. He's not saying that. What he's saying is it was a factor. In other words, I'm going to give you an example. You leave your house hungry and nobody feeds you. And you can't get no food from nowhere, especially from the people who's supposed to give it to you. You liable to eat from any fucking well. And that is the truth. You keep saying what you will and won't do, you'll stand in the damn soup line if you get hungry enough. You'll go diving in the fucking dumpster if you get hungry enough. You'll get to eating from people that you never thought you'd ate from before if you get hungry enough. But if you fed before you leave your house, you will pass up your favorite meal. Meaning that if you fool and you get everything you need and you're satisfied, there's no need for you to be looking for certain things elsewhere. Because you're satisfied, okay? Kangaroo only gives you desire. If you are in a marriage, in a, a relationship, something serious, seriously dating, whatever it is that you're in, and you know that you ain't giving it up like you should, and once and twice a month ain't enough. Not for no active wrong person. It's just not. It's not. Hell, you ask, I asked the average man person, how often do you expect? 
do you would you want to have sex every week? Most people say at least three, four times a week. Some people feel like that's a whole lot. I feel like that's average, but that's to me, it's average, you know? Kangaroo only gives you desire. It stays in your system three days. It gives you desire, it makes you wet, it intensifies your orgasms. Then you have the liquid. It just basically, if you use them together, it boosts everything. I have some people say, well, I tried the pill and it didn't work. Try the pill and the liquid together, sweetheart. In other words, if you see that something is not working, sometimes you gotta keep on trying different ways of doing things until you can make it happen. Oh, I did this here. Well, hell, try the orgasmics, the kangaroo and the kangaroo liquid and, and see what happens for you. Oh, hey, didn't work. Try the orgasmics, the kangaroo, kangaroo liquid and a damn bullet and see if it happens for you. Like, don't give up. Don't give up on it because you can have an orgasm. Another thing, a lot of people say um, less than three days. If you want less than three days, just do the liquid by itself and that'll give you 24 hours because the liquid is 24 hours, okay? This bullet... Men, you should not be feeling some type of way about a bullet. Y'all talk about all the dick you got and what you bring to the table. Why does this bullet bother you so bad? Why are you so jealous to know that something else can please her in conjunction with you? Because the bullet cannot replace you. The bullet is only going to add to what you are already doing. You want to see her, her talk some shit and cut up in the bedroom? Why are you up in that pussy? Put this bullet in between you and her. And she's going to sing a whole new song for you. You're going to be trying to cover all her damn head up so she can shut the fuck up. Because she's going to be just that loud. Why you down there eat, eating the pussy? Put this bullet on there while you down there eating the pussy. Like, yeah, turn that shit up a notch for her because she needs it. Her body needs it. Her body requires more stimulation. You should not be cutting up the bullets and throwing away the bullets and talking shit about the bullets. These are just stimulators, okay? So, we're going to close this orgasm gap. The next time, I'm hoping that I don't need a big old box like this. I'm hoping that I just have a few little sheets of paper because we're helping more and more and more women have orgasms. There's too many women that have children that have never had orgasms. I meet women with six or seven children that never had an orgasm. And you just like, oh my God, and I, my heart just goes out because... Why are you having so much sex if you are not having orgasms? You got to be able to get something out of it. Let's see. Niggas think that all toys are gay. No, I have not stopped selling the Pandora pill. We still carry Pandora. And, and let me tell you something with this and toys and being gay. A lot of times it's just ignorance, baby. People, when it's things that they don't know about, they're ignorant to it. Not that they're an ignorant person. It's just they're ignorant to the information, okay? That means they just really don't know. And that's why it's our job, especially my job as a sex worker, a sex educator, a sex coach, all of these other different titles, it's my job to teach. When women come in here and their husbands choose to stay outside because they upset because they want to get a toy, I tell them, don't get upset with him. Educate him. Teach him your body. Teach him what he needs to do to be able to help you. Because you don't want tension in your bedroom. You want to make love in your bedroom. And you want to have an awesome sex life in your bedroom. You don't want tension in your bedroom because the other person doesn't understand your body. And they don't understand that you need a certain type of stimulation just to be able to have an orgasm. Let's see. Okay, Miss Coleman says that she's never had an orgasm. You're single. I understand. But just because you're single does not mean that you don't have to have an active sex life. That means that you can get to know yourself. You don't even have to go get a partner, sweetheart. You can get to know your body so well while you're single to when somebody does come into your life, you can tell them what it is that you enjoy that pleases you. You can tell them, well, baby, I love a glass deal though after it came out the freezer. Oh, yeah, baby. I love a, um, a warming lubricant. Oh, yeah. I love this. I love that because you have experienced all of these different things with yourself. Oh, baby. I love a wall bang. I love to put it up against the wall and back up to it and just fuck the shit out myself. Yes, I love those things. I'm a married woman and this is all of the stuff that I experienced married. 
So just because you're single does not mean that you don't have to have an active, you can have an active sex life even if you're single. You can have an active sex life getting to know yourself. Okay. Let's see, let's see. I just want to make sure that I'm answering everyone's questions. All right, moving on. We are transitioning because Valentine's Day has already happened for the ladies. The next holiday is March 14th. That's the next um, holiday on my calendar because my calendar consists of sexual holidays, okay? The next one is March 14th. That's steak and blowjob day, okay? I have some brand new lingerie that has just come in and we're going to have it heavily discounted because I wanted the lingerie to match your blowjob bill, okay? So all of my ladies that comes in from this point on up until March 14th, and you make at least a $50 purchase in the store, you will get a blowjob bill, okay? All you have to do is make a $50 purchase and you will get a blowjob bill because I want to make sure that you're prepared for steak and blowjob day. What is steak and blowjob day? Steak and blowjob day is the male Valentine's Day, okay? No, you don't need candles and uh, balloons and teddy bears and candy and all of this other shit that, you know, that we like for Valentine's Day. All you need for steak and blowjob day is a healthy dick and a steak cooked to his liking, whether he like it well, rare, uh, you know, medium. You got to find those things out. And hopefully I can hook up with Chef B. If anybody didn't know him, tag him because um, we're trying to put something together. And I think this will be the perfect, perfect opportunity because um, I think I want to maybe go on his cooking show or something like that. And we're going to talk about, you know, how we can get a, a nice steak cooked because I want to make sure that y'all are well prepared for steak and blowjob day. So I'm going to try to get with Chef B um, so that we can get some uh, instructions on how to make a nice steak. We're even down to marinating it and stuff like that. So we can get all the different secrets that we need to get so that steak and blowjob day can be a success. Men, if you're ready for steak and blowjob day, hit that like button, hit that heart button. All of the men that's on here, if you're ready to get your dick sucked, extra, extra special on steak and blowjob day, hit that button on there so that I can see you. I need to be able to see that you are in, you're in agreement with me. Are you in agreement with me about steak and blowjob day? Hit that like button, hit that love button, hit something to let me know that y'all are looking forward to Steak and Blowjob Day on March the 14th. March 31st, March Madness. March Madness is going to be held in Baton Rouge this year. This year, this is the biggest mail review that comes to Baton Rouge that's put together by the PPG store every year, okay? Yes, we're the ones who put it together every year. It's at a private location. Tickets are on sale on the website, www.dppgstore.com. You cannot come into the store and buy a ticket. You got to go on the website and buy the ticket. The, the ticket is going to come to your phone, okay? And the location is going to be revealed probably a week before the show. I'm going to send out a mass message with the location, okay? So make sure you go online and get your tickets for March Madness. We still have lots and lots and lots of tickets. And again, come on into the store and get you a bullet, kangaroo, and definitely, if you're not having orgasms, get you some orgasms. If you're not having orgasms, get you some orgasmix. Okay, get you a bullet. Get you some kangaroo. Do some shit to help yourself. Stop talking about how you having a horrible sex life and not wanting to give up no pussy because you're not getting nothing out of it. I want to make sure that you're getting something out of it. I want to make sure that you're giving up a lot of pussy because you have an awesome, awesome, awesome sex. All right? Oh, and the last thing, if you have not um, registered to the website, please go register. They got the instructions on there about how to squirt. And then I just recently put up a little small snippet about gray hair on the genitals. Yes, this is something that is real. As you get older, the hair on your dick or pussy will start to turn gray. And it doesn't matter if you wax it. It doesn't matter if you shave it. When it starts growing in, it does grow in gray. I like to talk about this stuff because sometimes people get to acting like they didn't know that their hair changed colors too. Yes. Me and my children were at the dinner table this Sunday and some type of way we got on gray hair on the genitalia. And I had to explain to them that yes, 
As you become older, the hair changes on the genitalia just like it changes on your head, okay? But these are the kind of conversations that we have to have. Oh, next thing. I will be speaking on March the 9th at Phenomenal and Me. Contact Dominique Smith for tickets. Um, it's going to be an awesome lineup. It's for little girls. It's a fashion show. It's, uh, I will be one of the guest speakers. I will be talking about hygiene and consent. It will be very child friendly. So it's a, a mommy and me event. So moms and daughters, you know, lunch will be provided and all of that. Get with Dominique Smith and get your tickets. Let's see. Okay. Orgasmics is tasteless, colorless, odorless. So yes, you can still have oral sex. And yeah, they will probably experience a little tingling on the lips as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Sex Talk with Sharonda. We are going to close this orgasm gap, okay? We're going to close this orgasm gap. We're going to help each other, okay? My job is to teach you so that you can get the information and teach somebody else, okay? That way that everybody should be having awesome sex. All right. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed. Visit us online, www.dppgstore.com. Oh, and today's look came from the Brickhouse Boutique. Yes, out of New Orleans, the Brickhouse Boutique.